I'm gonna do now is uh, go ahead and put the timing cover on. That goes on first. Uh, the way these uh, belt drive systems work, timing cover goes on, and then once the timing cover is on, then the bottom pulley goes on, and you know, of course, everything seals up nice and tight down here. Uh, and then we got a seal that goes in the top. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, degree the camshaft today. So let's get the front uh, on here. All right, so making some progress here. Uh, I got my timing cover. This is an Exodyne, I think it is. Uh, that's the part number on this one. It's a raised cam version, of course. So we got this thing cleaned up. Uh, now, ideally, I mean, this thing's got this thin little O-ring up here, uh, but down here it's kind of broken. So uh, I usually just put a very, very light coat of silicone down here where it's kind of broken, but up here, I don't really do anything. And this thing seals pretty good. So we're going to just leave that the way it is. So we'll go ahead, basically uh, bolt this on. Once we get this bolted on, then we'll go ahead and install the lower uh, pulley. So we'll heat that up real good and get it to slide on. That works real good. Now this uh, is the seal here. So this seal does not seal on the harmonic balancer. This seal seals on the crankshaft on this uh, lip right here. So you wanna put that on dry and then uh, you'll be set. So no lubrication, no oil on that and then uh, that is set. So we're gonna go ahead and do this uh, real fast and then once we get this done, we'll slide the cam in it, clean the camshaft, get the camshaft in there, and then we will uh, degree the camshaft in. Alright guys, I just wanted to show y'all. Y'all saw me heating this thing up with a torch. It would not go on there. And I had to use a welding glove. But look. So when you do that, the press fit is still there. But this thing just slides right on. And so, uh, yeah, that makes it much easier when uh, when you're putting this thing on. And then, of course, the, the harmonic balancer will go on here. This is my, my up, so it's not quite on top dead center. You can see it over here. Brian, I appreciate the help tonight. Um, I ain't did much. It kind of worked out there. I have a whole I, drawer full of homemade tools. I, I tell you, when I come over here, I kind of feel like I'm on Fast and Furious. You know, the first one when Don said, if you don't find a tool over here, you ain't a mechanic okay. or something. <laughs> Brian's got every tool you could ever need to figure out how to work on something. <laughs> so that's that's awesome. But that's years of doing mechanic work. 45 years of it. I mean, that's how, that's how long. I mean, you just accumulate stuff and you make it work. I had to buy the little tool, but we were able to take the big tool. I've to... got tools that I haven't even used in 30 years. <laughs> so we're almost done here. We're almost done for the night now. This one, so this is my dot. Uh, piston is up, which this piston is still below the deck. That's just the way this one works out. This is a little bit higher deck. Uh, 9.02 is factory. Um, Kevin and then told me what it was when they uh, actually decked it. I can't remember what it was. Uh, but this is approximately up. Uh, i got to put a little bit of silicone on the back of this plate here. Uh, we'll put regular motor oil. These cam bearings, uh, they are not pressure fed. They are uh, simply uh, splash fed with oil. Uh, so I guess that's the, just the way they do the cam bearings. Um, it's, it's, it's a little wild. But uh, so we're going to uh, go ahead and get the cam slid in. All right guys, so we got this tightened down. So now we've got everything. We're gonna go ahead and put this on. Uh, this thing is very simple. It's got one little keyway here that holds this on. So essentially all you do, or all I do, is wrap the wrap this around. And then go around the pulley here. And then you can kind of figure, and kind of see when you're close to getting it on the dot you wanna get it on. And then it goes right on, boom. So then that's good. And now this is, the retainer this is a retainer bolt so that goes in now this is not a normal thread like i said this is a, a left hand thread so lefty tidy so um, the reason they do that is because the way this thing turns it, it actually is trying to tighten 
the the thread. So I don't know what the torch spec is on that, but we'll go back and torque it down in a minute. So now we've got this thing on. Uh, you know, you have a little bit of tension here, a little bit of pressure. The this thing would never be able to come off, but just because of the way uh, this pulley is designed, uh, and you know, you've got the tension there. So now I'm gonna go grab the harmonic balancer. We're gonna slide the harmonic balancer on it. We're gonna put our timing pointer on it. Uh, make sure uh, it is where we think it is. If it's not where we think it is, then we can simply loosen these four bolts here. And when you loosen these four bolts, essentially uh, the inside turns and so that's how you're able to change the degree of the camshaft okay let's check it out right on this part here this is the roller part this is what makes it so you can actually install to be on this side so you want that to go down to the crankshaft and then basically this nut just screws on and then it just presses it on even from the middle no hitting it like we used to with a wood or a hammer it just literally just presses it right on. Andy's, for instance, the way his is done, the actual um, the crank comes all the way to the end. Uh, when that happens, you have to be careful to make sure that this is actually, uh, your bolt is torqued down your big washer on this. So this is the correct one. So, um, hey guys, so we got this thing torqued down. We torqued this down to 50 foot pounds and we torqued this down to 85 foot pounds. Uh, got my homemade timing pointer here. Uh, I don't know what happened. I made this thing back in the day. So this is zero, the way you verify. Now this is a little tricky with this magnetic uh, piece <laughs> that is a cast iron part. But basically this is zero now. So I have already set it, so that is zero. And you can see on my balancer, that is zero as well. And so essentially what you do, all you do is very easy. So I'm, it's gonna be hard to do with one hand, but basically you turn this thing backwards and so I went back a little bit and you can see I, you, can, you can count it. So you can say how many degrees you go back and then you can look at your balancer and then you can go back. So the way, hold on, let me put this on the stand real fast. All right guys, so we got you on the stand here. So I think this is gonna work out. So let's see here. Okay, so right now we're a little bit past the top dead center. So we're gonna go back. So right now we're on eight degrees before top dead center. So we're gonna roll this thing up to where we're 10 thousandths before top dead center. So right there is 10 thousandths. And if you look at my timing pointer down here, which I'll show you in a minute, it's on four degrees before top dead center. So if we roll it, so we come up, now we're at top dead center. But if you notice, there is a little bit of a dwell time. I'm still turning and the piston's not moving. Now it's moving. So we're gonna go back to the same thing, 10. So we're right on 10 again. And so now what you do, all you do is compare. So basically we just touch the dwell so that we can make it so that uh, you can see. So you can see on the harmonic balancer, it was on four at 10. And so now when you look at this, it's about four as well. It's probably about three actually. So it's really, really close. Um, I do, this balancer is not marked past. So essentially what we can do is uh, we have to measure. So we can measure from uh, from zero to four. Then we can measure from zero and then put us a, a line here and then see what it looks like. So I'm gonna show you this best I can. So I got my micrometer. 
So if you look from zero to four degrees is about 246 thousandths. So if we go from, from here to here, if you look at that, now it lines up again. So that is my balancer, my harmonic balancer. My timing tab is perfectly matched. So when this is on zero, it's truly on zero. So you find that with a piston stop, you can, or you can do it this way. I prefer to do it this way because it just works the same way. Read the harmonic um, balancer and read the dial indicator. All right, guys, so this one is very simple to do. Uh, basically what you do is you bolt this on. This can be anywhere, but zero on harmonic balancer, but it can be down, it can be turned 180, it don't matter. The thing that matters is this piece of TIG wire. This is an aluminum TIG wire. Basically, this is your timing pointer. So if this zero was over here, basically you'd put the zero here and then you would put the timing pointer here and then it would work out exactly the same. But the way it worked out, we're good here. So now what we have to do, we bought this. This is an adjustable uh, little gauge. It's a micrometer and it's on the end of a stick here and it can go down into the board. The thing you have to be careful of, you want to go on the intake side, right? We're, we're checking the intake center line right now. And so the intake center line, the exhaust on a small block Chevrolet is here. So this is the intake load. So we're going to set this down in there. Let me show you. Okay. So we're going to go take this. We're going to go down in here. And the way this one works is you twist it. And as you twist it, it tightens up somehow. So as you go down, so this is all the way up. And then as you twist this down, it expands down in the bottom to hold it. So on the intake lobe here, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna get it kind of close. The key thing is, is right now we are not on max lift. So let's go, uh, I got it right there. So now I'm gonna take my my socket, my socket and my ratchet, and I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn this thing. And what we're looking at now, we, we need to get, to get this thing, we need to get this at peak. And you can actually, if you don't know what the camshaft is, you can actually measure it. So right now it's on the base circle. You see it's on zero, but it's not on zero, but this dial indicator up here is not moving at all. And so I can, we know that we're on that. So what I can do is we can, let's go ahead and put this on zero here. Uh -oh. And so it does move. So you have to be careful with it. I'll be paying on that. So we're on zero. So now we can actually check the lobe lift on this thing. As we're going, you count how many times this thing goes around. All right, we're fixing to go up. So there's 100, 200, 300, 400, 451 is what the lobe lift is. So then you take the 451, multiply it times your rocker ratio, 1.5 or 1.6, that gives you valve lift. Then you take out the lash, and then we take out the lash, that's the actual lift. So 451 is what we uh, what we have on maximum, on maximum lift. I need to jot that down so I can actually do that math uh, in a minute. So um, now, what we're trying to do now though, is the greedy camshaft. So let's look, so this thing is, it's gonna be hard for me to show y'all both of these at the same time. So I'll have to kind of go back and forth. So right now we're at, we know we're at max. So what I want to do now is I want to zero my dial indicator here. And the reason I want to dial zero it is because down here on this is what we need to lead. We're reading degrees now, so right? So we got that thing zeroed. So now what we have to do, uh, we can continue to keep going or we can back it up, which is what you want to do. So that since we already know we're at peak right here. So back it up. Uh, I usually back it up about a hundred thousandths. So right there, we backed it up a hundred thousandths. And then we're gonna go to 50 thousandths before, before right there, we're at 50 thousandths before peak, right? So now we need to record this number down here, this number, this number down here on the actual uh, thing here. So you count it, 60, 
one, six, two, six, three, sixty. That's like sixty-four degrees. Almost sixty. That's like sixty-three and a half. So we need to write that down. Sixty-three and a half. Okay. So we have recorded sixty-three and a half degrees now. So we're going to continue onward to peak. So there's our peak right there. Uh, it goes a little bit past it. So we might do this twice and then we're going back down. So now as we're going back down, we're going to stop at 50 degrees after. And so once you get it there, so that's 50 degrees after. Now you need to jot down this number. So this one now is 144 and a half. So let's put that down. All right, guys, so we just done the math. I just measured it. I did it twice. And these are the numbers I come up with. Uh, 208 divided by two, because you got two. So the intake center line right now is 104 degrees. So this is why you want to check it. Basically now, this camshaft is right here. So I'm gonna need where this is at now. Actually, this is advanced. This is advanced right now. So I want the intake center line about 110. So I need to retard the camshaft on this. So it's real simple to do. All I do is loosen these four bolts up. It simply moves. And so that's all we're gonna so do. We're gonna change this. So this is why it's important. If you, uh, you need to pay attention when you're putting this thing together. Uh, but I like to do this anytime I'm here. I mean, it's super easy to, to do it, to, to degree the camshaft. But this is why you want to degree it. Uh, right now, if we were to run this thing, it would be out of breath completely at the, at the uh, probably 7,600 RPM. And so now what we're gonna do is so we're gonna retard it and uh, it's gonna make it better. Okay, let's move it real fast and then we'll do the numbers again. About uh, six degrees. So we should be about 110 intake center line now, even with that thing saying it's retarded two degrees. So let's jot down the numbers as we go. So now we're at 100, we're at 100 thousandths before peak so now we're at there's 50 so now we're at 69 and a half yep 69 and a half let's let me jot 69 and a half down real fast so 69.5 it comes up it peaks out right there and just a quick glance at my my wheel down there showed it was about 110 Let's see, so right there is 50. Now that's a hundred and, that's pretty much 150 right there. Okay, let's do the math on it real fast. All right guys, so we've done that math and 69.5 plus 150 equals 219.5 half divided by two. Intake center line is 109.75. So that's where we're gonna leave it. We wanted it about 110, 109.75. That's pretty doggone close. Uh, so we're gonna leave it right there and we're gonna try it. Now, if we want to advance or retard the camshaft from there, we know right there is essentially 110 degrees and we can retard it two more degrees on this thing and, or we could do it uh, if we want to advance it, take it back to zero. Uh, generally, I have run turbo cams before at like uh, in, the, in the 108 range when I was really having problems pulling a car, but uh, we don't really have that problem anymore. So 110 is about ideal. Um, if we want a little bit more top end, we'll retard it a couple more degrees and put it on 112. So that's it guys. That is how you degree a camshaft. That's how we do it. Uh, so, I mean, there's probably other ways, but that's how we do it, easy enough. All right guys, comment, like, and subscribe. Appreciate y'all watching. Uh, we'll see y'all soon, later.